Hey guys, welcome back to the Hive SS channel. My name is Ivan. Today we are going to look at this Yumi DG Bison Pro, a budget offering from Yumi DG. I kind of had my eyes on this uh, model for a while and I was really curious to see what are they offering for under $200. I mean, the specs are pretty high up. You know, a couple years ago we could not even dream for these kind of specs. But today for $200 to get this kind of hardware, it's definitely curious. But before we move to the details, a word from our sponsor. And today's video sponsor is Hookies. I love this name, Hookies. It sounds great, right? Hookies is one of my top choices when I want to go ahead and buy uh, one of the latest titles of uh, any games, PC games, Origin, Steam, they even have PlayStation games. Or if I want to go ahead and buy some of the software, they have genuine Windows uh, Professional and Home Keys. Also some software packages, of course, Microsoft Office 2019 and other versions. So excellent choice to go ahead and get yourself a key on a great deal. Use my promo code HWS for 20% off any game or any other software you see on their website and you want to buy. Again, this is HWS for 20% off. That is it. All right, the Yumi DG Bison Pro. What do we have inside? What do we have inside is a rugged phone with higher level IP ratings for dust, for mud, for water, for drops, you know, all kinds of shock improvements. And this one comes in with 6.3 inch 1080p IPS screen, eight gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of internal storage, 5,000 milliamp battery, triple array camera in the back, built-in infrared thermometer, two customizable buttons, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, all that with the support of dual SIM or a SIM card and an SD card. So a lot of options are offered with this Bison Pro for the price of $180 currently on sites like Banggood. Uh, by the way, I bought this one with my own money because I was curious to check out this uh, model and obviously to see what, what kind of features we can expect and what kind of performance we can expect with something like this under $200. Um, as always, we're going to get closer, see what's inside the box. We're going to do a quick unboxing. Uh, we're going to do a quick overview of the software. One of the best things about Yumi DG and their phones, they come with a stock Android and this one comes with Android 11. Uh, and the other very good thing, which is probably the number one selling point, at least for me, for Yumi DG is World 4G Bands. So this phone is supported by all the GSM providers in the United States as well. If you have a SIM card, just pop it in, off you go. In fact, I have a SIM card from Verizon as well. And I just for a test, I plugged it in and it's working with no problem. So if you have an active SIM card, just pop it inside off you go no problems i was able to do phone calls even i was able to do calls over you know, wireless internet so all these options are available and this is the number one selling point for me let's go ahead into the unboxing and at the end we're going to talk about in the conclusion some of the things i really like about this phone and some of the things i don't like or i dislike and you guys are going to see some samples of the pictures taken with the camera and some videos. You probably can make the judgment if this phone is something that you'd be interested in uh, as a budget offering. If you're a person that really likes to be outdoors, uh, you know, hiking, riding bikes, mountain bikes, uh, maybe working outside all day long and you're afraid you're going to drop an expensive phone and break it, that can be a good choice for you. But about this and a little bit later. Yumi DG Bison Pro. Yellow box quite nice actually I like this box a lot uh, fairly big and in the back we have outlined uh, some of the features and the specs of the phone so we have in the back uh, 48 megapixel main camera 60 megapixel camera plus 5 megapixel and the front is 24 megapixel I think all the cameras are made by Sony so we have all the major bands we need here in the US also those in Europe and all over the world um, hopefully they're going to continue with the same trend in the future when they release more phones with 5G so we can have a choice uh, to uh, get one of those phones and use them here in the United States. So let's see what's inside the box. Right on top we have the phone with again outlined the specs. We have also on board infrared thermometer. Very convenient for today's day and age right with the virus and everything going on. Let's see what else is in the box. So we have a small in English user manual very good 
Uh, we have the charger, which is European style. Doesn't really gonna work for me here, but I'm not planning to use it anyway. I have tons of other chargers. Uh, so just an FYI, we have a red cable, USB to USB-C. Nice to see right here. And this one actually power deliver is uh, five volts at two amps. So let me go back to the phone and take these protective covers. So I think it's already, yeah, there's already pre-applied screen protector, which I'm planning to preserve on the screen, despite the fact that they're saying there's a Gorilla Glass already on it. It's always better to have some extra protection. So looking around the phone before even turning it on, I'm gonna look at the back side real quick and show it to you, kind of the side. Kind of heavy, but that's what we expect. This phone is rugged. This is meant to be dropped and put in water. Yumi Digi are saying that we have IP69 uh, rating here, which means pretty good uh, water resistance. So on the side, we have a volume rocker, which these are metal buttons. Uh, the side frame is metal. You will see all the screws. We have uh, some branding designed by Yumi Digi. Uh, so we have plus and minus for volume, power button. We have customizable button, which you can dedicate anything you want to it, I believe. And on the other side, we have the SIM tray, which supports two SIM cards and micro SD card, our fingerprint uh, reader, and we have uh, SOS button. So on the side, you'll see waterproof, shockproof, uh, very nice. Um, I like the heft of that phone, actually. Some uh, options here for linear if you want to add one and kind of hook it the branding is here in the back we have usb-c on the bottom with the microphone and on the top we have 3.5 millimeter headphone jack so all the excuses big brands are giving us oh because it's waterproof we cannot add 3.5 millimeter headphone jack well there's your evidence that's not the real truth we know what it is and you see these extra corners are supported if you drop the phone it won't crack or break see the camera array in the back the 48 megapixel camera plus the 15 plus the 5. We have the thermometer, which is right here, and we have the flash, the LED flash, and some more microphones here. And the whole body is kind of rubberized uh, plastic, I think. That's how I feel like. And the side is metal frame. Um, obviously, we have the front camera here and the speaker. But let's turn it on. Hopefully, there's some power in it. So we can, uh... so I'm going to cheat a little bit here and move you forward a couple of days since I actually had to charge the Bison Pro uh, because initially there was no uh, charge inside the, the battery at all. And the charging time, by the way, takes about three hours. So keep that in mind, the 5,000 milliamp hour battery inside the Bison Pro will take about three hours to get charged. But once it's charged, it holds a charge for a very long time. And I'm actually impressed how long time uh, has been holding a charge. It's been over three days since I uh, charged it completely and uh, idling and playing with it and doing other things and browsing, watching some videos. We have 66% left. So <laughs> I'm looking at probably a week, at least five days of, you know, light work. If you're an intensive user and it's constantly in your hands, you can probably see at least two days out of this phone. Uh, and this is probably the most or like the highest uh, point of this phone is the battery life. It's actually very good. UI wise, uh, it's a completely stock Android 11. We can only position four apps on the bottom for some reason. It's not allowing us to do a five, unfortunately. So it's only four there. So in order for us to have an app drawer, we have to go to the home screen settings and then launcher style and remove home screen, put it to default. So once it's on default, then we can swipe up and have all of our apps in the app drawer. So some people prefer that. Or if you go ahead and do the same thing and just do home screen, that way you're gonna have apps on your home screen and no app drawer. Most of the things are pretty similar to what we have seen on default Android uh, 11. But if we go to the settings, I'm gonna show you a few things that are specific to this phone. And one of the most specific things is the two customizable buttons on both sides. These ones in orange are completely customizable. So if you go in the settings, you'll see smart key. So in the smart key, we have the settings for that one on the right side. And then we have the settings, the one on the left side. So uh, it offers us a single click, double click and long press, which is great. We can assign three different fun functions. Uh, you know, single click here gives us Google Assistant. Of course, you can change that to whatever app you want or you know that easy shuttle so anything of these are available as well i set up to go to google assistant double click is screenshot and then long press is uh, turning on our flashlight so if i long press it 
you will see it turns off the flashlight on the bottom uh, if you long press it again it will turn it off and then on the other key same thing we have single click opens the infrared thermometer which again it's a great feature to have in this phone infrared thermometers are something uh, pretty useful these days double click is open by default zillow so i don't know what the app is uh, that came pre-installed with the phone and realistically this is the only kind of like bloatware app that i can see nothing else uh, out there and long press is open sos um, so yeah a lot of customizations with these two keys i'm very excited to have these because i am missing a lot of these functionalities in most of the phones uh, my phone my daily driver for the last two and a half years the xiaomi mi 9 have a customizable well sort of customizable button uh, extra button on the side for google assistant which i am constantly using all the time and i really like it uh, and then uh, what else we can show here <laughs> like i said in my preview if you go to about the phone and you do system update you will see there are no system updates and actually i'm not expecting to see any system updates um, unfortunately that's the case with those cheaper brands and you can see here eight gigabytes of ram 128 gigabytes of internal storage dual sims now that's nice to see and uh dura speed is something that is uh kind of a option through the rom as well you can read through it and, and see what it's all about it, it's kind of helps boost the foreground apps by restricting background apps and stuff like that but i really don't want to enable that because why do i have eight gigabytes of ram right if you go to display uh mirror vision is one of the things that uh mediatek based phones have for like picture standards uh, dynamic contrast and all that stuff so that's one of the things i've seen in the past as well in a lot of those mediatek based uh, phones uh anything else is pretty standard i really don't see anything uh, that it's uh, striking me out as a uh, complete difference but one thing i noticed it's it's kind of a it's kind of an odd thing i've never seen that before well so I, I saw the storage i'm like 48 gigabytes taken why so i was going going through it and it says 29 gigabytes of photos and videos so once i click on that and it shows that we have a video that it's 28 gigabytes and obviously i took some screenshots but that video was by default here so i went through it and it's three hours video i guess factory workers uh, doing something and the phone camera is on because i can hear him talking in chinese uh, and all that stuff this is this is extremely odd that's the first time i've ever seen anything like this uh, whatever test they were doing at, at the factories i guess uh they left the camera on so that kind of took a big space but i just wanted to show you guys i uh, i left it but i'm gonna delete it that's like this gonna empty out 30 uh, gigabytes for you uh, real quick uh, things here i wanted to show you on the screenshots i took so uh, one of the negatives here wide vine level three security unfortunately we are not going to see any netflix uh, amazon prime uh, hbo max or any of that stuff on full hd we're going to be stuck on standard definition because that security level um, again for a cheap device like that i'm really not surprised but ideally if Yumi DG want to uh, make a statement on the US market or on the global market, they should uh, really uh, pay some more money and get that security level uh, one so we can all enjoy uh, this beautiful uh, IPS screen and watch some uh, movies on full HD. And the other thing is this is the speeds with my home router. Not bad at all, almost uh, you know on par with my Mi 9. Uh, obviously the Mi 9 is faster. I have it, uh, I have download speeds about uh, close to 500 megabits on my Xiaomi Mi 9. Uh, we have here about 340. Um, so it's slightly slower, but not that big of a deal. Again, that's not bad at all. So I'm gonna show you some uh, samples of uh, pictures as well.
but just opening the camera real quick i want to show you a few things uh, we have a beauty mode we have a video mode and we have picture obviously we have portrait and we have extra so here we have night mode panorama pro and slow motion all good options right here if i go back to the picture we can enable and disable the hdr ai uh, flash and inside settings we can select our size of our picture by default is 12 megabytes but you can go all the way to the 48 megabytes uh, once again that's the main camera 48 megabytes the sony camera if i go back to video here and then settings you will see that the quality maximum quality we have is full hd um, you know no 4k with these mediatek uh, processors 1080p not bad again for this kind of a price the level uh, of a device under 200 dollars I'm not expecting any miracles. If I go ahead and disable the HDR and show you the settings again, you see now that we have a lot more options, including anti-shake, which is electronic image stabilization. Great to see that for a phone that it's under $200 to be able to have that option. And if we go back, uh, you know, now it's definitely, you can see when you shake around, it does a little bit of a, of a job to kind of compensate with that. But again, I'm gonna show you uh, some real uh, images and footage uh, when I go outside. That way you can judge how the cameras are performing. For me, at the price, they're not bad at all. Now, if I go to the thermometer, if I press this, you will see this is the thermometer up. So you can ha you have an option to measure people or objects and it will tell you keep the device from one to three centimeters from the distance. So if I go to objects and hit measure, you will see now that the temperature of the box it's almost 25 degrees exactly that's that's the temperature in the room right now 25 degrees celsius i have a thermometer right there sitting so i can see it so not that too much off and with people it's the same thing you gotta place uh, um, somebody's forehead normally it's better but even if somebody's hand you see 36 degrees uh, this is going to uh, measure my temperature so very useful to have very very useful i really like that um, having a 3.5 mm headphone jack on the top is great. I didn't notice any static noises or any issues plugging in headphones. And this is a great option to have, especially in the phone that is IP69 uh, certified, which is, you know, excellent. It can be submerged for a long period of time. And there's actually camera mode that is kind of like underwater uh, option. Just snap photos without touching too many things. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty snappy. I mean, it's a, you know, obviously uh, no overlays, just a basic uh, default and stock Android. So that helps a lot with uh, uh, the phone. The processor is not the fastest, but the RAM is plenty, eight gigabytes. The internal storage is uh, EMMC 5.1. It's not UFS, so it's not the fastest again. But again, keep that in mind. This phone is under a hundred, 179 right now. So not bad at all. By the way, uh, look at the speed of the side fingerprint. So I'm gonna place my finger, and you see how fast it's gonna unlock. So maybe a second. Uh, it's not the fastest I've seen, but opens and unlocks it every time without any mistakes. It's like 10 out of 10 times. So if I close it place my thumb, opens it right away, about a second. Again, it's active all the time, so you don't have to wake up the phone with a button or anything, just place your thumb and unlocks it. Great to see that. Uh, the speaker is right here on the back. It's not on the bottom, it's not on the top. It's only single speaker, but it's pretty loud. So if I go and open YouTube uh, with one of my uh, videos and play it. A lot of people are in disbelief and thinking that the new Asus Dash F15 should be a lot better since it's packing RTX 3060 on board and thinking that the older RTX 2060 so you can hear how loud it is actually it, it's pretty loud it doesn't sound like a incredible quality but it's pretty loud and, it, and you can hear it from a big distance um, so I can't really complain about that phone calls are great uh, can't complain about that as well it's just a regular phone you know we have the 24 megapixel front facing camera and you will see how the image look, uh, looks like. And one of the greatest things about that front facing 24 me megapixel camera is actually have the same electronic image stabilization option for it. And this is excellent. Uh, of course, we can uh, go down on a different level of images. The maximum one is 24 megapixel. If I go to 12, we still have the option for anti-shake or electronic image stabilization. So that's great to see with this phone. Overall, I gotta say for the price offered $180, can't, can't really complain about this phone too much. You know, obviously the 
um, white vine level one would have been great and a few other things would have been great to have uh, but if you're looking for somebody to have a rugged phone that they can take you know hiking or working and they're not afraid to drop it or you know scratch it and all that stuff and you know work with it maybe on a construction or whatever that could be a great option for somebody in a long battery life um, think about it if you're out in the woods or hiking or somewhere and you're not having anything close to you to charge the phone having that long, long battery life can be very helpful they, their way even out days after you'll be able to call uh, so far so yeah i'm pretty impressed you're gonna see some samples of the video and uh, pictures uh the screen it's pretty bright i'm actually surprised how bright it is it's ips it's not anything fancy it's not amoled or anything uh, but it has automatic brightness and it's pretty bright for the most of the part and being ips it's uh it's pretty pretty responsive it's 60 hertz obviously without we we're not having anything fancy like 90 or 120 or 144 uh, not for that price obviously um so yeah that's uh that's that's my review for this unit uh, i really like it even even to a point in mean, i spent my own money so uh, 180 dollars i think that phone is going to be a great gift uh, for my dad uh he's on the run outside all the time doing stuff uh, working on his yard so having this kind of rugged phone is going to be a lot better and especially with a uh, big battery life that's one of the key features right there that's uh that's pretty much it i i like this phone and let's talk about it in conclusion real quick all right conclusion time and what do i think about this yumi dg bison pro there's definitely a lot of things to talk about there's definitely a lot of things to uh, mention that are positives and i'm going to try to be as fast as possible because you guys know me my videos are getting lengthier and lengthier because i like to go in a lot of details uh and as always if you have if you have any questions just send me a message uh just post a comment on the video below and i'll respond to you as soon as i can but what do i think about the bison pro I really like this phone I have to say for $180 you're getting a lot of phone uh, for your money and a lot of features that not a lot of phones actually have uh, obviously there are negatives I'm gonna mention them as well but first the positives again number one positive is the coverage all SIM cards well I haven't checked uh, Sprint but uh, AT&T T-Mobile which are GSM providers in the United States, Verizon, which is CDMA provider, their SIM card was working, so wide variety of bands are covered, world bands, so you can use that phone pretty much anywhere in the world if you want to. Next thing is uh, battery life. The battery life is extremely good. The MediaTek uh, G80 inside is not using a lot of power, I guess, uh, and this phone with this built-in 5,000 mAh battery uh, can last at least two days if you're an intensive user if you just occasionally you know taking phone calls messages and checking out uh, let's say instagram on twitter uh probably even more three four days yeah idling i mean it's been uh my last charge was four five days ago and i'm 45 percent at the moment so 45 percent for five days idling um <laughs> that's outstanding i mean none of my phones can do that uh, definitely better better life is excellent um, the IP ratings, obviously IP68 and 69, high ratings of dust, mud, water protection. It's, it's excellent to have. I mean, you can have this phone, drop it in the water, um, keep it in the water under you know 1.5 meters for 30 minutes. I don't know why would you do that, but I guess you can go underneath water and just take pictures and videos as well. Um, if you drop it on the on the ground on the floor hard floor it's not gonna break uh, corners are enforced uh, this material is very enforced so this is very rugged phone that you can use uh, with your adventures outside or you know working or if you want to give it to a child that it's prone to break their phone all the time you know that's a good option it's not gonna break the bank and definitely not gonna break the phone as well uh, screen is okay 6.3 inch 1080p IPS screen pretty bright but you know it's IPS it's 60 Hertz it's nothing really to write home about it's not OLED it's not 90 or 120 Hertz or whatever uh, but that's fine to be expected with that price range dual sim support SD card support excellent 8 gigabytes of RAM plenty of RAM stock Android which is excellent to see to about the software in a second uh, 128 gigabytes of internal storage for me that personally it's plenty um, and if you want to expand it just put a SD card uh, unfortunately the internal storage is uh, EMMC 
it's not UFS, so it's not super fast, but it, it kind of uh, fits into the budget or into the price range. So it's not the slowest, but at the same time, it's not the fastest. Uh, but for under $200, I'm not, I'm not disappointed at all. And the RAM, obviously it's abundance, you know, eight gigabytes of RAM. I mean, you can, you can uh, open tons of apps and just shift between them with no problem. Uh, having stock 11 Android is great again. And this is one of the biggest downfalls about Yumi DG and some of those cheaper brands uh, updates. So most likely you're not gonna see an update or you're not gonna see regular updates. Let's put it this way. Uh, I will be surprised if I see any updates at all. Uh, but most likely this phone is going to be stuck with this, its uh, security patch from June of this year for a while. If that doesn't bother you, no problem whatsoever. Personally, I'm not that concerned since I'm not doing anything uh, crazy on this phone. I'm not going to go ahead and, you know, go to unsecure websites and stuff like that. But uh, it's definitely something to consider, something to think about if you're planning to have this phone as your primary device. Another big positive, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Excellent, and all the companies are giving you excuses. They cannot fit it in the phone because of the IPX uh, ratings and all that stuff. Obviously, that's not true. Uh, they just wanna sell you accessories and charge you more money for stuff like that. So that's the main reason. That's the, you know, the well-known secret that everybody knows about. Uh, so obviously the, the jack is here, there's no problem underwater, uh, it's, it's fine, it's not gonna destroy your phone. But the convenience of just plugging in wired phone, headphones into this jack and listen to music or watch videos, it's uh, so much better than looking for wireless ones and if they're charged or not charged and they cost more and all that stuff. But that's a subject of a different conversation. So this is a great thing to see. Pre-applied screen protector from the factory. Excellent to see any company that does that uh, have my thumbs up. On the battery side, just to, just to paddle back a little bit, uh, you know, 5,000 milliamp uh, hour battery, but charging time is not fast. You're looking at three hours of charging time uh, to top off the battery from zero to 100. Uh, obviously that's an unrealistic situation. Don't, don't let your battery go down to zero. Definitely it's charging overnight, so do that. Camera wise, I'm actually surprised how well the pictures look. I mean, especially daytime, you know, don't expect anything crazy about night, night modes and all that stuff or any incredible uh, shots or details, but uh, the Sony sensor inside does a pretty good job. The 48 megapixel camera, the main camera is, is nice. It takes a good, well-lit uh, photos during the day. Uh, obviously there's negatives, but to my eyes and for the price, it looks pretty good. Uh, the macro camera, eh, I'm not a huge fan of this. I actually think the, the main camera takes a better macro uh, photo than the dedicated macro camera. But, uh, you know, to each their own. Uh, I understand why they put these just to, you know, up, up the count of uh, the cameras. I, I really don't care about that much. And the included infrared thermometer is very useful, especially nowadays. You can check the temperature not only uh, of objects, but person as well. And it's pretty accurate with like points to one, two, to three, to the decimal uh, degrees difference, which for me is very acceptable. Well put together, good quality, good metal frame, good kind of rubberized uh, covers. Um, so far, I think uh, for $179, this phone is definitely a recommendable. Um, you know, if it was more expensive, I would have some reservations, but for that price and for the functionality that offers you uh, for like a secondary phone or a child phone or somebody that really doesn't care that much about the latest and greatest technology, that phone will be excellent and battery life obviously is amazing. So yeah, this phone gets my thumbs up. I definitely like it and recommend it for that price is great. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. If you want to support this channel, check out the link in the description below. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video, stay tuned to the channel, subscribe if you're new, and as always guys, you have a wonderful day.